Hello, today we are going to talk about the CASEL, the Comprehensive Assessment of Spoken Language, and this is the second edition, so a pretty new test. It actually came out just very recently. And there are a lot of pieces to the CASEL, so as you can see, it has three different easels. It's got the manual and then your, your protocol, your record form as well. This test is incredibly comprehensive. It's one of the reasons why people really love it. But as you will see as we go through, there are a lot of pieces to it. Let's start with the record form. So the record form is really hefty. It's probably the biggest record form you will see for any of the tests that we administer. At least to my knowledge, there's not one that's bigger than this. But it has a lot that's going on here, which is really awesome. One of the really great things about the record form that you will see is that it not only tells you your basal, your ceiling, um, all of your rules right at the very top of every single section, it also tells you the age for that particular section as well. So you'll see here at each of the subtests, it will tell you this is the basal rule, this is the ceiling, and then whether you are allowed to repeat that item or not. Like many of our other tests, it does have start different start points for different ages. So you don't have different record forms for the different ages, you just have different start points for those ages. And then just keep in mind that you do have to have that, that baseline, you do have to have that basal, so four consecutive items, meaning that they have to get four in a row correct. So keep in mind that if, let's say, you're working with a client that's seven to eight years old, you would start here initially, but if they get this incorrect, you're going to move backwards until you have that four consecutive and then jump back down to this one. Your ceiling rule for this particular one is also four consecutive, so once they get four zeros in a row, you're gonna stop that test. We can flip forward to any of the other parts of this test in the protocol, so idioms, and you can see that this is only for ages nine to 21, and again, it's gonna give you that basal, the ceiling, and whether you're allowed to repeat or not. And then it just lets you know kind of all the directions here. So while that's super great, yes, that they're here and you're gonna add up all the ones that they get right, you're gonna put it down here and that gets transferred to the back. So I'll show you that actually a little bit later where we're gonna put that. Always keep in mind that while the rules are on the record form, you do want to make sure that you're looking at the manual before you start your test to make sure that you're giving all of your directions correctly and you're following all the rules correctly. Alrighty, so then once we have that raw score, which this is really great, the manual also reminds you, just a quick reminder because I forgot to say this, just a reminder, all items below your basal, they do get the score of one. So if you start, let's say 19 to 21, and you just move forward, you don't have to do that reversal rule, you don't have to go back. Anything before this counts as part of them getting it correctly because it's just assumed that if they can get anything after, that certainly they can get anything before. So here it starts on number 20, so they would automatically get 19 as a raw score, 20, and then, well, because the rule is that they have to have four, they would have obviously 23 as their minimum that they would get. So you have your raw scores, they go here, and then you're going to transfer those to the back of this record form. So the record form does fold in, looks like this so it gets to the back and it looks very overwhelming at first there's a lot going on back here but you're going to open it up and all of your raw scores are going to go here so here's the raw scores for all of the subtests that you're going to do and just like any of our other manuals we have a really great section in the back so this particular one starts on page 240 for the castle and so what you will do is here's all those raw scores you're going to find the subtest that you're that you're working with. So if you look closely at the top, you will see that it has all of your subtests here. So if you were to have your protocol here, oops, my apologies, it's stuck under this. If you were to have your protocol, you will see that you have receptive language, antonyms, synonyms, yada yada yada, so forth and so on. So you're going to flip over to 
to 240 for your start point for this particular section. We'll start on page 240. And that just basically gets lined up. So receptive language, antonyms, synonyms, um, expressive language, idioms, so forth and so on. So you want to make sure that you're under the right one to start with. And then you're going to find that raw score and then that gets transferred to your standard score. So my apologies, that actually starts on 241. This is test age equivalents on 240. 241 is where those raw scores start and you're gonna transfer those to standard scores. Okay, so you find whatever the raw score is. So let's say they got 49 as a raw score on receptive, on the receptive vocabulary. That would give them a 132 standard score and that puts them in the 98th percentile. So that all gets transferred over here onto your protocol. Those confidence intervals are right here on the bottom. So for receptive language, depending on which one you're using, you're going to add or subtract seven from that standard score. So if they got a 132, the confidence interval, if you chose 95, you're going to add and subtract seven. And that's gonna go right here on the record form. So you would do a standard score, 149, you're gonna check off the 95, add and subtract seven, and that percentile rank is that 98. So if you go to the one page over, you will see that you can do test age, the age equivalents, and this is from the raw score. So keep in mind, again, if on the receptive vocabulary they get that 49, you're gonna find the 49, and you're going to say our age equivalence is between nine years, zero months, to nine years, five months. Just one page over. And then that would go right here on, this, on the, the form as well. Another thing you want to make sure that you're paying attention to is that you're, you're looking at the correct age. So this is really important that you are looking, so this particular one on 141, this is by grade, that's gonna do grades, and then moving forward, this is gonna be by your grades. If you wanna do your, your raw score to a standard score by age, you're gonna flip forward, forward in the, the manual, and then you're going to find the appropriate age. So for raw score conversion to standard scores, that is going to be, that will go all the way down to your, your age three, so your youngest kid that you can have. And that starts on page 115. Ooh, very heavy manual, my apologies. So 115, so whether you're converting it from by age or by grade, make sure that you're starting at the correct place, but still the same process. So we find whatever one of the subtests you're doing, then you find that raw score, and then if you wanna use that little trick that I've used before with the paper, you just throw a piece of paper or notebook or something down, give yourself a nice solid line. So there would be a 44, giving you a standard score of 148, percentile rank of 99.9. .9. Confidence interval, again, is down here at the bottom. And you would do plus or minus, depending on which one of these subtests you're going for. Well, numbers are super great. They're not always necessarily the most helpful thing to everyone. So descriptive range is something that you want to make sure that you're adding to your record form as well. And there is a spot for it right here at the end. So after you have done that raw score, you've converted it to your standard score, you've done your confidence interval, you've done your percentile rank and your age. Now let's talk about what that means. So this is really helpful and this is where when you're writing your report using these this descriptive range is really great so for the castle two this is going to be on page 27 and here is your description right here so any standard score for any of the subtests that falls between 85 and 115 that is average and then above or below average and you get these nice descriptive words these are super wonderful to put in your report when you're writing about the child or the young adult that you're working with.
Now we're going to move on to the easels so you can actually see the testing parts of what you're going to be showing your client. What's super great is that because you don't need to administer the castle in its entirety every single time, you just need to do the core for sure and then you can do the other subtests as some supplementary information. I think it's super great because it gives you lots of information on this on your particular client. But when you're looking at your different subtests, it's going to tell you which easel this particular subtest is in. So receptive vocabulary is in easel test easel number one. So here are your easels. Let's do them in order. So you have test easel number one, and it tells you this is lexical semantic test. So all of your lexical semantic tests are here. If you're just having a foggy day and you're like, wait, what? It's super great because everything is right here as well. So it helps keep you on track even if you haven't had your coffee that morning. E test easel number two, that's your syntactic test. So anything to do with your syntactic testing. And then test easel number three is all of your super linguistic and pragmatics tests. These are my favorites. So all of that stuff that I love to talk about is all in here. Let's stick with receptive vocabulary, just the very first one. So this is the, the, the prep record form that you're going to be using. You're going to be counting whether they're getting those right or not right. Keeping in mind that for this particular subtest, you have to have a score of one on at least four consecutive in order for you to reach your basal, basal being the basement or the lowest amount that you can have. So you're going to put your easel up just like many of our other tests. It's just your basic easel, like other tests. And you're going to flip it open. And everything is right here, just again to reiterate everything that you need. So reminding you what you're going to be doing, your instructions, everything is here. All right, and then you're going to flip away. It tells you again, your basal, your ceiling, and that there are no prompts for this particular test. So it lets you know. And then your stuff, the stuff that you're going to be saying is in teal. So all of your stuff is in teal. So it sticks out so that you know what you're supposed to be saying to this particular client. All right. So you always start with your examples. Examples are right here at the top. So you always do your examples first and everybody gets an example. So you're going to say, let's look at these four pictures. I will ask you to point to one picture that goes best with what I say. Point to the girl, right? So turning it a little sideways because this is going to be really crucial for the castle that you can see what your client is doing. So put your record form back here this is the angle that you should be sitting at. Unless you're lefty, then it goes on the other side, right? I'm a righty, so we're gonna put it over here. So you can see the easel, this will be your view, and you can be recording at the same time. And you just flip away like that. And then you go through the whole thing, and all you're gonna do is just follow all the directions. So that is the same, even if you're in a different section. So let's say you're going to the antonym section. You'll find antonyms in your record form. Here are all the rules. Look here, make sure you pay attention to this. It's not for your little bitties. It doesn't start to until five. Here is the prompting you're allowed to do. Here's your basil, here's your ceiling. Here is Here are all the rules. So then you're gonna do the example. Again, you read everything in teal, and then if they get it right, if they get it wrong. And then one thing to keep in mind that you want to be cautious of is that you're not saying, good job, great job, you got it. Because as soon as they don't get it, and if you say that, that's a big red flag and they're gonna know they're starting to get things wrong. So things that I've learned along the way, things that are helpful to say to the client, you're doing great, I'm glad that you're staying so concentrated, thanks for working so hard, thanks for staying focused. Those sorts of things are awesome for the client to hear. Not necessarily, good job, great, you got it, that's perfect. Then just to show you, just so you're aware of the other easels, here are, they all look just alike where they're all going to have those same introductions for you. They will all tell you your prompting basal ceiling and then tell you exactly what you are supposed to say. 
while it's great to get a quick little idea of these easels and of this test, it's always really important that you actually go through and read yourself, read what you're going to be doing just so that you're prepared. Um, especially if you're somebody like me who has a nice reading disorder, uh, it's really important that you do a lot of pre-reading. So if you know that about yourself, just make sure that you do pre-reading. And then keep in mind that not everything is going to have a picture for your client. So sometimes it's just going to be you reading things to them. Sometimes when I'm working with younger clients and I'll say, oh, here, you're going to look at my beautiful picture that I have for you. And it's a really exciting picture. So just try to make it light, especially when you're getting into this, the kind of heavier things where you're getting them to think more abstractly. And this is where the test can really get pretty complex. Again, my favorite. So lots of fun making them think deeply and then making sure that you're reading just here and then inferencing. So you can see again here, inferencing, you're going to get some pictures with. So you would put this up in the easel format. You want to leave it up in the easel format, even if there are no pictures. I'm just showing you laying down this way. All right, and those are the testing easels. When they remade this, they definitely wanted to make sure that this was as straightforward as possible, probably because it's such a comprehensive test and there's so much here. This is really awesome. If you just read these reminders, this is really going to be helpful. So it's gonna tell you where to transfer these raw scores so that you know what to do with them when you're finished. And that is going to be the same for every test. So at the end of every subtest, it's gonna give you little reminders. It's gonna tell you how to determine that raw score and then it's gonna tell you where to put that raw score, which is super helpful because this is so big and there are a lot of pages here. So once you have everything and then you flip to the back and you're like, oh my goodness, there's so much more and there's more and there's more and it keeps going. It does, there's a lot, but it tells you where to transfer. So you know to put those things either on this back portion or if you're putting it on the inside portion of this particular record form. All right, so the castle could go on and on and there is a lot more that I could tell you, but for the sake of time and not making this video too long, the majority, or not the majority, everything that you need as far as transferring things to index scores, those sorts of things, Everything is gonna be found in the back of this manual. Just always keeping in mind that you're looking at either the grade or the age that you want, making sure it's the right one. But I just wanna show you one last thing. So unlike a lot of other manuals, when you look at the castle, you will notice that the student's information is not directly on the front like most record forms. That is because that is all going to be in the back. So you can flip it over, then you can open it up and all of that identifying information is going to be here. So just make sure that you figure all this out, make sure you're doing that age correctly, and then a lot of your recording, all that stuff is going to go in the back of the manual. All right, I know this was a lengthy one, and for sure there's a lot more to the castle than what this video covers, but this is just your very foundational basics. Hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to make a follow-up video.